Hey everybody, it's Adia, and today is going to be the last day of my mini vlogmas. Thank you guys so much for watching and for giving me suggestions. So as requested, today is going to be like a lifestyle favorites, winter favorites type of video. So I'm going to talk about some home items, going to talk about some clothing, books, and music. So first up is going to be home stuff, and I'm in my bedroom because I want to talk about some new bedding that I got. Okay, so here's my bed. A few of these things are new that I really love. First thing is this duvet. This is from West Elm. It's like their crushed velvet. I love this. I wanted something velvet, but I didn't want it to be like super heavy. And so I like this light gray color because with like the crushed velvet like sheen, it kind of looks lighter and then darker in some places. And so I think it goes with the overall kind of like cream neutral vibe that I have in my room. And then I wanna talk about the sheets. So these are linen sheets. So this is a duvet in here. And then I have this linen quilt, which is from, this is from Brooklinen. And then I have these sheets, which are new. These sheets are from Parachute. Okay, so I bought uh, my first set of linen sheets from Brooklinen about maybe about a year ago and it was like a total game changer because I get really really hot when I sleep and I never really thought that linen sheets would make a huge difference compared to cotton sheets and I kind of felt like the difference between how hot I might get at night was more so like if I'm using blankets over or if it's hot or cold in the room. So for me, having linen sheets made all the difference really between me being like really, really hot, sometimes even waking up in the middle of the night because I was so hot. And so when Black Friday came and there were all these sales, I went to Brooklinen and I was gonna buy another set of sheets, but they didn't have like a light gray color for a queen size bed. So then I was like, oh, let me see what Parachute has. And so I got these sheets. And I had already ordered this from West Elm, but it hadn't gotten in yet. And so I was hoping that this would match, but I wasn't like 100% sure if it would match. But then it came in and I think that just like overall, the different gray tones and textures with the cream looks really, really good. And um, these sheets are great. I really love them. But what I did get is another pillowcase from Brooklinen. This is also like, I have a cream set of pillowcases from Brooklinen, but then I wanted to get like a light gray to match this. I think the Brooklinen silk pillowcases are wonderful. They're so much better quality than the ones that Slip makes. The ones that Slip makes, I feel like are really thin and they don't last at all but these ones are awesome. And then I got this from West Elm. This is the Mongolian lamb wool. I think this is so soft. Oh, I love this. And I love like having the different tones and textures of gray because it's still like simple, but then there's like interest. It doesn't look like it's just a plain gray bed. So this is the same pillow sham as this. This is like old from Home Goods, like years old from Home Goods but I really love my bedding. Okay, um, I'm in my bathroom now. Another favorite I have are these parachute waffle towels. So like, I kind of didn't know if I wanted like light or dark or if I wanted the waffle or the like thicker, like traditional kind of ones. So I got both sets and I love the waffle ones and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, so, <laughs> I like the waffle ones because they're really thin. So you can really like wrap them around your body and secure them on your body. And if you're like me and you like to wear a towel while you're doing your hair or your makeup or getting ready, but you don't wanna have to be like constantly like shifting the towel, these ones are good because they're so thin, but then they are super, super, super absorbent. They're soft, but they're lightweight. So they dry off really quickly. So. I think they're great and they will be even like more appropriate if you have, if you live in a hot, humid place or if your bathroom gets humid and doesn't get a lot of ventilation because 
we all know like when the towels don't dry is not a good thing so like to have like some lighter weight towels really makes a big difference in just you know the overall vibe of the shower experience so i love these these ones are really nice too these are just like more the traditional like plush like towels they're heavier they're thicker they're very soft they're great but these ones were just such a pleasant surprise because I really didn't know what to expect. My last home thing, I gotta talk about these forever mood candles, okay? So like, I literally just got these in the mail. I ordered the holiday scents and this Naughty, Naughty and Nice or Naughty Nice, it smells amazing. It's so good. I have gotten, I got the like nude season or the sin nudes, like the mini candles. That was like my first forever mood purchase. And I was very impressed with the quality of the fragrance. Um, you know, during this quarantine time, I dabbled in making my own, own candles and high quality fragrance oil is extremely expensive, but that's what allows the fragrance to have a wide throw, right? To like fill up a room and for it to linger in the room. So it's not like you have to stand directly over the candle for it to smell anything, but it's very expensive. And so I think when Jackie's brand launched and people were seeing the prices, I feel like people were kind of like, oh, why is it so expensive? Why is it so expensive? But having burned the candles, they are expensive. I don't even think they're expensive. They're just not cheap right? I don't think they're expensive, but I feel like they cost what they cost because the smell is so powerful. Like the ones I have right here and the one I'm burning is like the big size, but let me just show you guys the mini size. Okay. So this mini size right here, this will still scent a whole room. And even when you just smell the candle, not lit, you can smell it a lot. You know what I mean? So it's like, and the scent will linger for like a day. The scent will linger in the room after you blow out the candle. So I like if you're reading like the fragrance notes and it sounds like something that you're going to like, then get it because I am just like so impressed. And there's a lot of scents that I just haven't seen before. Like it's not a lot of the super common scents. And I just think they're really well done. The shipping takes forever, but it's worth it. So I just got, I just had to say it. They're great candles. Okay, next up, I want to talk about these boots from J. Crew. So here they are. I love these boots. Okay, like I got them on sale for like a really good price and I just think they're so cute and they're so comfortable and super cozy because like this shearling lining is all throughout the whole shoe. So it's all the way inside. It's around the edges. It's on the sole of the shoe on the inside. So it feels like you're just like your feet are just like in a cloud. Okay. Like <laughs> these come in black too. And I just... Oh, I love these. I'm super happy with these. Like, I cannot recommend these more highly. Like, I just feel like they're so cute. I also, one of my favorites are these um, sweatpants. These are actually from the men's store. They're Vans, the men's section in Vans. Like, I love Vans. I think that's just because I grew up in Southern California. So it's just like 90s skater culture was huge. And so I've always loved Vans, but I saw these and they're like cotton, but then they have like, you know, certain patches of that like swishy material. So it's like, can't see it that well, but you know, it's like up here, like the pocket and this other pocket right here. So I just think they're really cool. And then they have like this little like drawstring thing, which makes them perfect because, you know, typically men's clothes are not going to cinch in at the waist because most men you know, are just more straight and don't necessarily have like a snatched waist. <laughs> so it's great that these sweats have this because then they fit me like really well, actually. I think, I think they look great. So yeah, these are one of my, two of my like winter favorites. Okay. These are wrinkled, but <laughs> 
This is like my favorite brand of sweatsuit that I've discovered this year. I actually got these like this summer, so but I still wear them all the time. So that's why I'm talking about these now. So these sweats are by this company called Tiki's. And they are amazing. It's a Canadian brand. They have this kind of like garment dyed cotton. They're like oversized drop drop crotch sweatpants and like oversized sweatshirts. I have this in this color and a more terracotta color. I love these sweats. They're 100% they're cotton, but they're not super thick as you can see. So for California, I feel like they're perfect. I wear these during the day. I wear these to sleep in. Like, <laughs> I wear these all the fucking time. And I feel like because of this color is not like typical sweats and just the cut is kind of like that jogger kind of cut. And this is kind of like, it just goes straight across the body. It just, they're sweats, but I feel like they're like one step above normal sweats, <laughs> if it's even possible to be one step above normal sweats. So I love these. Um, my mom loves these and they're just amazing, but they also take a long time to ship. But I think the quality is great. I've worn these so many times, washed them so many times, and they have held up really, really well. Okay, so now I want to talk about um, music. I'm going to talk about music and then I'll do books last. So for music, who are my new discoveries? Well, not necessarily new discoveries, but people that I'm really super into. Number one is Caliucci's. Uh, she just came out with a new album. I think it was at the end of November. I love her music. She mostly sings in Spanish, but she'll like sprinkle in a little English here and there. And you've heard her voice before because she was like featured in a Daniel, well, I can't say that you've heard her voice before, but you may have heard her voice before because she was featured in a Daniel Caesar song and I love Daniel Caesar. So um, I love Caliucci's, like her music is just a vibe. Like she's amazing. Nas, Nas's new album was my Spotify number one most played album. Like in the top songs, like probably five of them were from Nas's new album. So I'm a huge fan. I mean, would I say I'm a huge fan of Nas? Like, I love hip-hop. I love rap music. So, of course, I respect Nas as an artist and as an icon in hip-hop. But, like, growing up, I would not have said that I was, like, a huge Nas fan. Like, he has some really good songs, don't get me wrong. But growing up, I feel like it was, like, the battle between Nas and Jay-Z, and I was definitely more of a Jay-Z fan. But that album is just amazing that's that and then for books so i love reading i'm a huge reader and you know that's one blessing from this time is just like having more free time to read so in the last couple months i've been super obsessed <laughs> with listening to this series of mysteries the author is called louise penny and her series of mystery books is called the inspector gamash series i listen to them also, hot tip, if you guys are in America and have a library card, you can use the Libby app with your library card and you can just check out audiobooks and Kindle books just through the app. So that's an amazing discovery that I know has been around, but I didn't discover that until 2020. So I've been using that so much and it's like, it's free. It's amazing. Uh, but anyways, the Inspector Gamash series it's just, it's such a good series of mysteries. I love mystery books. If you like mysteries, you need to check out these Louise Penny books. And the thing that I really love about this series is that Inspector Gamache, he works in the homicide department based in um, Montreal, Canada. And so obviously he's a homicide investigator. So somebody always dies, basically. <laughs> At least one person dies in every book. But the books are not like dark, you know, and it's kind of weird because it's like, how are you reading about murder mysteries? And it's not like super dark and gory. Some mysteries, you read them and you're just like, this is just disgusting. Like humanity is just sick, right? <laughs> but like 
these books, of course, there's a mystery. Somebody dies, but it's not like they're super gory. They don't talk all about like blood and pain and that kind of thing. Really, most of the books are really going into Inspector Gamache and kind of like how he solves mysteries and his relationship with the other agents that he works with. So it really is more about just people and like how people work together but it makes it like for me like I don't like scary movies I don't like to read things or watch things that are just like super dark and just you know 2020 is hard enough like I don't need to read and watch things that are just like showing like the worst of humanity type of things these books are not like that I highly recommend them they're amazing so another book that I've been working my way through this winter is Attached. So it's all about attachment theory. And um, basically it's focusing on how do adults form romantic relationships. So it's good if you're in a relationship. It's good if you're single. It's just kind of explaining our attachment styles. Like how do we view or approach like getting closer to somebody romantically? And it's super interesting. It's very insightful. It's definitely a book that like I read in like bits and pieces because I do kind of want to be able to pause and like think about what, you know, what's coming up in the book. And it's not a book that I'm just like racing through. If you want to just dig deeper and learn more about connecting in rom romantic relationships, then I definitely recommend it. It's a really good book. Another series of books that, yeah, I've been into for a little bit is like the Wolf Hall trilogy by like Hillary. I can't think of her last name, but uh, <laughs> it takes place in England in like the 1530s or so. And it mostly follows like kind of like a rags to riches kind of story of like this impoverished a son of a blacksmith that becomes the king of England's like most trusted advisor basically. The background which I actually find more interesting is you know England split from the Catholic Church and how the Church of England became and you know they also kind of talk about the Reformation and Martin Luther and just kind of like the beginnings of the decline in like the political power of the Catholic Church. That's something that's kind of in the background that I find very interesting. Um, I And I actually, it has kind of like prompted me to like dig deeper in that because I'm sure as many of you know, the Catholic Church at that time was like the political power of Europe. And now, especially as Americans, we have this idea of like separation of church and state, like, et cetera. But like at that time, there really was no separation between church and state and political leaders were the religious leaders as well. So it's just like interesting to kind of see like how that school of thought was developing and also just how, you know, the conception of like, how does like an ordinary everyday person, how does that person connect with God? And how does that person learn about God's word? Because at that time, like religious texts were in Latin and everyday people didn't even speak Latin, much less read Latin. And so kind of like it was very re revolutionary at that time to have a religious text that was in the language of the common people. Whereas like now, you know, there's so many you know, I am Christian, that's my faith. There's so many ways to access the Bible, right? There's like 50,000 apps. Whereas at that time, people didn't even think it was right to, for like an ordinary person to have access to religious writings. And so that's just like, kind of like an interesting background to those, um, to that series. The third book, I actually didn't even finish the third book because it started to get like so slow and I was just like, I don't know, but I am going to go back and finish it. It's an interesting read. And I know it's like a super popular trilogy, but I would recommend checking it out if you're interested in that time period. I just had to like go through my Kindle to see the other books I'm reading now. So I'm also reading Hood Feminism by Mickey Kindle. And I'm not done with it, but I really have enjoyed that so far. The book is really just about like, expanding the notion of feminism, expanding like who feminism is for 
and like what kind of women does feminism seek to empower? And it's basically a reaction to, you know, this author's feeling, which I tend to agree with, that feminist movements have been pretty much focused on middle-class white women and the issues that middle-class white women are facing, which valid, but they're not going to be the same issues that working class women are facing, black, white, whatever color. It's not going to talk about what immigrant immigrant women are facing. It's not going to address what black women are facing of any class. And it's a very like exclusive, narrow focus of like, what are the concerns of feminism and what issues is feminism seeking to address and what women can properly like take up the mantle of feminism. And it has been like a very, very narrow ideology according to this author. And so she's like, look, for me, like this is what feminism is. And, you know, feminism in its best and like greatest form is about empowering and enhancing the lives of all women. And if you're able to do that, every other human is gonna benefit. You know, and it also is like you need to think about the experiences of trans women. You need to think about the experiences of sex workers. Like it's just there's a lot of perspectives that we need to take into account when we're pushing for the advancement of women and for women's equality and for women's empowerment. So I, you know, I'm all for that. I think the book is really uh, well done so far and it's like easy to read, very clear. If you've ever been like turned off by feminism or if you've ever felt like when people talk about like feminism, they're talking about issues that you don't really resonate with and that don't seem to align with your life and your experience, then I would definitely suggest checking out Hood Feminism. And the last book or series of books that I'm going to talk about, they're not new by any means, but there's, you know, it's a series that I've recently returned to. And that is the Harry Potter series on Audible. So the reason why I have like returned to Harry Potter and started listening to them is because I have had a really tough time consistently getting good sleep. I kind of just like downloaded all the Harry Potter books on Audible because I love the Harry Potter books. I've seen the movies, I've read the books, but I've never listened to the books. And so listening to a story that you like, but already know is very relaxing, you know, because it's like, I don't feel like, oh, well, I need to stay up and make sure I listen to what's happening. I already know what's happening. So if five minutes after starting to listen to it, I fall asleep. Okay, I fell asleep, like whatever. Or if I'm having difficulty sleeping and I'm awake, I don't mind listening to it. And I could stay awake and listen for an hour if that's what it turns out to be. And so just like, that's actually helped me relax a lot at night because it's just kind of like background noise and I can listen as much or as little as I would like. If you've had trouble sleeping to just try one of your favorite books, getting it on Audible and just listen to it because it is really soothing when you're like revisiting a story that you already know. I think that's it. That's really like all of my favorite things lately, the things that have been keeping a smile on my face, uh, <laughs> which can be hard at times. Sometimes it's 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 hard to find a reason to smile, but these are all things that I've really enjoyed lately. So yeah, and I've also really enjoyed this vlog series. It's just been a great challenge for me. I feel like I get super in my head if like a video doesn't get the views or if it's not edited the way I like or if it doesn't, you know, this, that, the other. But this like small little challenge, which is kind of like, idea you like making videos like I actually do like it so it's like just do it you know it's something that you like you're never gonna it's not like time lost if you're doing something that you find pleasure in and that you're learning about and that's building a skill for you and it doesn't matter if anybody else sees that or you know you don't need other people to validate your own learning and your own enjoyment right so I feel like that's kind of like 
what this mini vlogmas was for me. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the suggestions. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. I hope you guys have a safe and happy rest of the year and it can only go up from here, right? <laughs> so please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.